Hello and welcome to Sorted Food. Today, two of our normal home cooks, Jamie and Barry, will be blind taste testing identical dishes and we're gonna ask them, can they pick the premium? By doing this, with a bit of luck, we will all learn better where to spend our money, how much difference there actually is in these ingredients and which of our normal home cooks has the most talented tongue. Oh, what? I don't want to know who has the most skilled tongue. Get your bets in at home, it's round one. Okay, simple rules, you've got A and B in front of you. Start with A, have a touch, have a smell, have a nibble. Oh, it's a sandwich. Is it for catcher? Is it for catcher? Very good, Jamie. You have two portions of sea salt for catcher. We've kept it really simple, olive oil, sea salt, and all the ingredients for catcher. But they are identical in the way they've been made, the way the ingredients have been weighed out the proving times, the baking times, the only thing that is different is one of the ingredients is more premium in one of those plates. Straight away, B is lighter in terms of I can fill more air pockets and crispier on the outside. Mmm, mmm, and different? it has more of a chew. They are both outrageously delicious, that's for sure. Which is the ingredient do you think we're comparing? There's not many ingredients in focaccia. You, we wouldn't compare yeast, would we? Flour. Yeah, so we kind of wanted to explore flour because I think we all think of it as such a basic staple. What happens if you buy a particularly cheap one versus one that you spend a bit more on? Is it worth spending the money? I look for the type of flour, you know, strong flour, self-raising flour, whatever it is that I need for the application, but not, I wouldn't necessarily go for a, a, a brand. I've bought premium flour at home when making my own pizza doughs and it changes everything. Suddenly it puffs up completely different. So both of these are strong white bread flour. One is a supermarket basic and one is more premium. Can you pick the premium? I feel like A has a more luxurious bite to it. I'm gonna say A is the premium. I believe that B is the premium. In that case, you've locked in your answer. You have said that B is the premium. Now take off the blindfold and see if there are any visual differences and whether you would, not that you can, oh. change your mind. Looking at them doesn't really help. But B has more height and it has risen more. I can reveal to you that in this first round, the premium is B. Uh -oh. A is Asda's own strong white bread flour. B is Shipton Mill artisanal Canadian wheat flour. And what Shipton do is kind of small batch milling, but also they kind of combine different wheats from different places, local farms in the UK, but also from farmers around the world they have good kind of supply chains with, and they constantly blend the flour so it's consistent and you always know exactly how it's gonna perform. That's really interesting. Is there anything I should have been looking out for? The bubbles is an interesting one because they had identical proving times and everything else, and what happened with the slightly cheaper flour was that they formed the bubbles and then basically they didn't have the structure to hold it and therefore they collapsed. So what you ended up with was crispier bits where a bubble had popped and it goes crispier, but the structure wasn't the same. Interesting. The Asda flour works out at 40 pence per kilo. Okay. How much do you reckon for the Shipton Mill? 60p a kilo, 50% more. I wouldn't be surprised if it's like three pounds. One pound fifty-five a kilo. You kind of led me down that path, didn't you? So, <laughs> you're still only looking at 70 or 80p to make a loaf of focaccia, but it is four times the price. Price-wise, that's fine by me. But if it is easy to work with and you are supporting a smaller, more local business, that's a, that's a good thing. You scored a point, on to round two. Yeah. That was warm up round ever, so let's, you know, let's make this serious now. Round number two. I'm smelling a curry. Mmm! Is this a, is this a chicken biryani of sorts? Excellent guess, chicken biryani. The question is, what is the premium ingredient oh, wow. we want you to try and identify? Right. 
is the, is the rice what we're looking at here. Both have been made with basmati rice. Okay, oh, wait a minute. Literally the only place on the planet where it's acceptable to do this. A are longer grains of rice that are slightly silkier. B are shorter and probably plumper and fluffier. I feel like I'm getting more flavour from A. One is a supermarket own brand. One is what we consider to be one of the more premium. A rice brand that we know that Michelin star Indian restaurants in London do use. So A is the premium. A. A is your answer, it's locked in. You may now reveal the blindfolds, have a little look. On visual inspection, I think I'm happy with my answer. I think A has longer, less broken grains. B looks like the rice I use at home, and that is not premium. I can reveal that in this round, the premium product is A. Get yes! A. Absolutely right. And it is slightly longer grains, slightly more fluffy and individual. You're right in the sense they haven't broken as much. And much more fragrant and floral. Basmati literally means aroma ingrained. It is far more aromatic than B is. I mean, it's not to say that both aren't delicious because they really, really are. A is VT, mega, extra long grain, aged basmati. B is Lidl's basmati rice. Sorry, aged basmati. So if you look at the colour of it yeah. as well, it's a it's slightly off white. Our understanding is it's aged in the sacks and the, the flavour just has a chance to kind of integrate more. I genuinely don't know a huge amount about that. If you do, comment down below. What decisions did you go through when you come to buying it? I don't really make a decision. I just go for a normal supermarket owned brand. Which I think is definitely a factor of the trust that we outsource to retailers. There are occasions when perhaps if you go off piste, you might end up with a better result. This doesn't really smell of anything. Whereas this smells of everything. What I found fascinating was the aroma compound you're kind of smelling is the same one that you find in Pandan. So that very aromatic, floral, almost grassy note. And basmati rice has 12 times as much of that as non-basmati grains. So you did get that one right. But now let's talk price. Mm. Uh, we picked this up from Lidl and per kilo, £1.29. Perfectly good basmati rice, creates a great dish. How much for the VT mega extra long grain? Four pounds per kilo. Can't be that much more premium. Let's say, let's say two pounds. You're going with two pounds a kilo? Two pounds 20. No, oh, I should have touched two pounds. Bang on. So it's about 50% more, but that's only 70 odd pence more per kilo. But now I know that's the difference. Maybe I should care more about the rice I buy. Yeah, I would definitely choose that. I think over the course of however many meals you would get out of a packet of rice, that cost will be negligible. But the difference in quality is massive. Stop eating that so we can try some. Oh, what a day. On to round three. So far, humble ingredients, spectacular outputs. Oh, okay, it's wet. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Oh, okay. It's an omelette. Oh, good omelette. Egg. Correct. Right. There was nothing in the omelette, so I'm going to say we're looking at eggs. We are looking at eggs. In front of you, you have two classic French omelettes. One of those plates is made with regular free-range eggs, and one is made with a more premium free-range egg. Texture's pretty similar. I think everyone at home probably already has an idea based on visuals. Obviously, Jamie doesn't have those visuals. I cook a lot of eggs at home, and eggs is one of the things that I do spend quite a lot of money on. When I have used cheaper eggs, are, I, it does feel like they've been watered down a little bit, and, and, and A tastes like the eggs I make at home. So I'm going to say A is the premium. Ah, I really don't know. A. A is locked in, that is your premium. Now take off your blindfold and see what we can see. This one's luminous. Are they Burford Browns? Yeah, the colour does kind of give it away. A is the premium. Yes, okay. So A is a free range egg, a Burford Brown from Clarence Court. 
and B, also free range, from Sainsbury's, J. James. That was really tricky. Start with the Sainsbury's ones. It's got a QR code on the inside for full traceability and provenance, and each egg has a code if you put the code the into the egg tracker. They have come from Shirley Blackwood in Scotland, so everything is completely transparent. That's really good to know. 100%. People want to know more about where their food comes from. In the example of Clarence Court, it's come from Clarence Court, and you go to the website and they've got videos, you can see the hens. It is incredibly transparent and, and premium as a result. What a beautiful colour. The hens enjoy a maize-rich diet carefully formulated to include wheat, sunflower, seashell, soya, paprika and marigold from dawn till dusk. A couple in there that surprised me, if I'm honest. Seashells? They're eating seashells. Oh, with calcium, I guess. And paprika adds a little bit of a kick. Colour? They have some pretentious eggs. <laughs> Tell me, Ben, where did the marigold come from? The flower beds. Right. If we are baking, I will buy, and I need a lot of them, I'll go for a slightly cheaper range, but not much cheaper. And I guess one thing that we're quite lucky with in the UK is the farming standards. The Clarence Court Burford Browns, they have free roam all day, rich diet. But even the J. James Sainsbury's ones, they are also free range. They still have access to the outside. They still have perch space because that is legislation that under EU law, we've always had to abide by, which is why we have excellent food standards in the UK. I think I'd still spend more money on the eggs. I wouldn't necessarily go for the cheaper option because it's not gonna taste as good. There's a lot more going on than just, just, taste. just the taste. 15 pence an egg from J. James at Sainsbury's. How much do you reckon for Clarence Court? 20p an egg. 50p. 50 pence an egg. Quite a lot more, isn't it? So just over three times the price. Quite a lot egg. more. If the egg is the star of the show, spend the money. Going into the final round, Jay, you've got two points. Chance to pick up a third. Oh, you're in such a lucky seat, Jay. Last round, number four. Same rules apply. Off you go. Oh, it's a pie. Go easy on that mouthful. Oh, all right. Come on. Mushroom pie? You have two mushroom pies. What's the premium ingredient we're looking for? The filling or the casing? Mmm. One of those was made with a punnet of supermarket chestnut mushrooms, and one was made with a more premium selection. A is a wetter mix. B feels drier and more coarse. And also, I'd say it's more mushroomy in flavour. So I'm gonna go with B being the premium. B is the premium. B is your locked in answer. Blindfolds off. Yeah. Any big differences on preference? You know what? I'm surprised at how similar they are. Supermarkets obviously have a range of mushrooms available all year round, but right now is when you'll probably find more variety when it comes to wild mushrooms. The filling in B, the mushrooms definitely look more interesting. Not that we were allowing you to change your mind, but it sounds like you wouldn't. Don't think so. And you shouldn't. B is the premium. Well, hey. Three out of four. Three out of four. Good, yeah, yeah, yeah. A is a punnet of supermarket chestnut mushrooms. Mm. B is a punnet of mixed wild mushrooms. They're sold as a wild mixed selection and therefore you kind of get what arrives. So they're a mixture of chanterelles, uh, girolles, black trumpet mushrooms. So let's talk price. I'm gonna do it per kilo to keep things easy. You don't often buy a kilo of mushrooms, but A, three pounds 15, per kilo. To that level, you're looking at like stuff like for 20 quid. Five pound a kilo? 35 pounds a kilo. So more than 10 times the price. Whoa, that's an astonishing price difference. If you're just looking for a mushroom sensation, then go with these every day of the week. Let's save those for maybe once a month. We were deliberately trying to test your taste buds today. I would not recommend you spend 35 pounds per kilo if you're going to blitz them up and put them in a pie. But some applications, they absolutely have a place, especially at this time of year when they're very, very seasonal. What are your thoughts? I'll be honest with you, Evers, I'm not going to change my day-to-day -day mushroom habits. I'm going to carry on buying supermarket mushrooms. But I will keep an eye out for a 
pun it of something that looks a little bit different. I'm never gonna buy a kilo of mushrooms at a time, so the 35 pound price tag feels obtrusive. I think that's bang on. So I can now reveal. Yes. Barry, you know you got four out of four, 100%, that is excellent. Jay, believe it or not, Barry beat you again. Number one, he never beats me. Number two, how did he get four correct? Very talented time. That's not what I was after, but thank you. <laughs> Genuinely, I love doing these because it's not often you get to do what we consider to be staple ingredients side by side to look at the comparisons. Tell us though, where would you spend the extra pence or pounds if you were to do it out of those four ingredients? And comment down below, what should we pick the premium on next time? We have an app. It's called Meal Packs and helps you plan and then cook a week's worth of meals using one set of ingredients, saving you money, cutting down on food waste and answering the age-old question, what should we have for dinner? It's free to try for a whole month. The link is in the description box below. But I guess when you feed your chickens those... Yeah, is that what it is? And paprika. That would do it. Yeah, tasty, but that's a spicy bum holes, wasn't they? <laughs> 